Okay, the chapter 8 is on linear regression, and I'm going to try to do my best job to explain as much as I can here, but um, what we do in class and, and what we need to focus on in class is really what's going to help us with linear regression. The idea with linear regression is we want to put a straight linear line that's going to go through the data, and what that line is going to be used for is to try to make predictions of data, because if we look at this chart here, this, this scatter plot here, we only have x and y values for these particular points, but what about an x value that we don't have a point for? We want to try to make a prediction for it, okay? And I know there's no actual values on here in terms of what these represent, but we're just going to give us an idea here. So the idea that we need to focus on right now is being able to find a linear regression, okay? We understand that we got the x-axis down here, the y-axis up here. So the point is we're just going to focus on x and y right now. Now, you would think that this program I use could draw a straight line, but apparently it can't. So I'm going to do my best to draw a linear regression line through this. And that is um, pretty crappy, but you get the idea. It's supposed to be nice and straight. So we have to understand uh, what a linear regression is. First um, thing I want to talk about is you guys call it a line of best fit. And now that's kind of grade school or elementary school. Um, some people even call it a linear regression or a regression line. And um, the why we call it a regression line is really, really valuable, really, really important. I'm going to try to explain that to you as best I can. Um, but the official line for it is what we call, I mean, the like the best name for it, the more statistical name is called a least squares regression line. So least squares regression line. And um, I need to explain why the heck it has that name, because every part of that name, least squares regression line, has important value and important meaning. Obviously, line should make sense, because it's a line. But let's focus on why it's called least squares regression line. So to do that, we several things we got to talk about. Okay, So I, I have two charts here to kind of show you, this one being positive one being negative, and oh boy, I'm doing my best to make that <laughs> as straight as possible. But anyway, so what is it in a regression line that we're trying to accomplish? What are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to um, make all the points close to the line as best we can. Obviously, some points aren't. it's not going to work for, and, and some it will for. So let's talk about what we refer to as a residual or it's kind of called error, but I, I don't, it's not an error in a bad way, all right, all right, it's just called like um, error in the sense that it's off. For example, okay, let's look at this point right here, okay, everyone see this point right here. I'm going to um, show you that this point is a little bit away from the line. Notice it's not exactly on the line, it's close. So I'm going to put a pink dot here on the line. So that line represents a predicted value. The line represents a predicted value. The black dot there is an actual value. So the distance in between is what we call error. It's not a bad thing like we made a mistake. Error is just the difference in between. We actually have a name for it. We call that error, we call it a residual. Okay, and a residual is how far you are away from what you were predicted. So the formula for a residual, a residual is equal to the actual y value minus the predicted y value. Now, how do we denote a predicted y value where it's an actual y value? Well, interesting enough, we put a little hat on it, just like that, a little teeny hat, and we call it y hat. So y hat is a predicted y value, so we have actual minus predicted. And again, the line creates these predicted values. So if you're on the line, you're predicted. If you're a black dot, you're an actual value. So uh, easy way to remember the order of that is A comes first in the alphabet, so actual goes first, actual minus predicted, because you don't want to mix those up. So again, here's another one right here. Let's see this, well, notice this black dot right here that's actually on the line. That would have a residual of zero because the actual minus predicted was exact. But this one right here, again, there's the um, predicted right there. And the distance in between is the residual. So that's y minus y hat. And I know that it's hard to see that. But anyway, y minus y hat. That is the um, residual. Again, it's the distance from the actual. So every point 
has a residual value. If you're below the line, think about that, you're going to have actual minus predicted. That's going to have a negative residual. So when you do actual minus predicted, you're going to get a negative. These points above the line here have a positive residual, positive residual, negative residual. There's a negative. That's a pretty big negative residual there. Very small positive residual, very small negative residual. This point, again, falls right on it, so that's zero. Very small negative residual. Over here, we're a little bit more scattered. It wasn't as strong as the graph, so we have a little bit bigger residuals. Here's a negative residual, negative residual, negative residual. There's a positive one. There's a positive one. So we have all these different residuals, okay? So again, a residual is simply the difference between the actual value and the predicted value from the line. So the actual y value from the point versus the predicted y value that comes from the line. So anyway, we want to add all those residuals up. And you have the best line, the line of best fit, a least squares regression line, if you add up all those residuals and get zero. So if you add up or sum up the residuals, you want to be able to get zero, if you think about it, right? Because you want the positive residuals to cancel out with the negative residuals, meaning that your line was perfectly balanced in between all of them, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, um, the problem is we don't necessarily, they, they should add up to cancel zero, but we may actually need to do something with that. So in order to have them not cancel out, we add up or we sum up, and the formula for sum up is we sum up, we sum up the square residuals. So we take all the residuals, y minus y hat, and we sum them up as the square residuals. So we square them, making all positives, okay? And we want that sum to be as least as possible. So this is what this is important right here. This is why it's called a least squares regression line, because we want the sum of the square residuals to be at least as possible, to be as small as possible. So why don't we just say, hey, we want it to be zero. Just add them up and make zero. You know, honestly, I don't know. Somebody thought squaring them and making that value as small as possible made more sense, whatever. So we want a perfect line goes through the data, making all the residuals add up to zero, or making the sum of the square residuals as small as possible possible. So if you think about all the different lines I could draw through this data, I mean there's a million different lines I could draw through this data. Um, the best one is the one that has the sum of the square residuals being as small as possible. So that's why residuals are really, really important and um, it's called a least squares regression line. So that's why I want to teach you that. Now, how do you find that regression line? Honestly, I'm not going to go through all the hoopla of how to find that regression line, but here's the formula for it. It is y hat. Why y hat? Because the regression line is found to, is, is, the regression line finds predicted values for us. Remember, the regression line only makes predictions because it's like a theoretical line. And the formula is A plus BX. Now, this is what we use for statistics class. Now, I know that you probably are used to straight lines back in algebra being Y equals MX plus B. So we don't use that in statistics, okay? So we got to be careful. We change things up a little bit. We change the order. We change what we call things. But B, next to the X that goes in the back, B is the slope of that line. So B is the slope, okay? And the formula to find that slope is quite interesting. It is R, which we've talked about, the correlation coefficient times the standard deviation of Y, divided by the standard deviation of x. So if you take the standard deviation of all of your y values, okay, divide that by the standard deviation of all your x values, times that by r, you get the um, slope. Okay, now, oh man, I'm really botching that up. A is the y-intercept. Okay, now I know we're used to calling b the y-intercept, but this is our statistical this is for stats, sorry, it's a little bit different. This is what we use for stats. The y-intercept is um, found by doing this. To find A, you do the average y-value minus the slope that you just found times the average x-value. And that is how you get A. Now, I know that that seems confusing, but you have to understand, your calculator, if you type in the, all the values into a list, will tell you the average for the X, and it'll tell you the standard deviation for the X's. So those are done for you. Type all the Y values into a list, you're going to get the average Y and the standard deviation for Y. So all that's going to be given to you, and I'm going to teach you on your calculator how it will also find R for you. So this is the equation right here for the least squares regression line. 
And now I want to talk about why it's called a least squares regression line. We talked about why it's called least squares, because it's the sum of the square residuals. We want to be as small as possible, or at the very least. Why is it called a regression line? Because notice slope. You guys all understand slope. So let's go back to you know basic algebra. If the slope was 3 fourths, that means that the y goes up 3, the x goes up 4. So the y goes up 3, the x goes up 4 draw your line, right? That's what that means. Well, if we think about this, slope means that we go up, stand, for every standard deviation we go up in y, we go up a standard deviation in x. But the r is being multiplied, so the r is on top. So you could think of this as r standard deviations of y divided by 1 standard deviation of x. So for every r standard deviations of y you go up, x goes up 1 standard deviation. Okay, so let's let's use an example where we're talking about the x being height and the uh, y being weight. So we're trying to do height, predict weight, right? Height, predict weight. You're always trying to predict the y. So every time I move up one standard deviation in weight, I'm sorry, every time I move up r standard deviations in weight, I move up one standard deviation in height. So sometimes it's better if you look at it the opposite way. So let me explain that. Remember, we're talking about standard deviations, right? So kind of like z-score, z-score standard deviations. So we go 0, 1, 2, 3 standard deviations, right? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 standard deviations. So here's x. x is going to go up one standard deviation um, in terms of height. So if I'm one standard deviation above the average height, okay, that's where it puts me plus 1. y will only go up our standard deviations. So it's it's going to go up like this, r standard deviation. So the y went up r, the x went up 1. Now, wait a minute. Think about this. Here's why it's called a regression line. r is always a number from negative 1 to 1. It's never, ever going to be 1. Remember, that's like perfect, which we never are. So r is always a little bit less than 1. So that should make complete sense. Every time we go up one standard deviation in x, we go up r standard deviations in y. And r is always a little bit less than 1, hence y will always be a little bit behind x. Hence, regressing behind. Hence why it's called a regression line. So x goes up 1, y goes up r, which is a little bit less, so it's regressing behind. If x goes up 1, 2 standard deviations, y goes up to our standard deviations, which is always going to be a little bit less. So my point is y is always a little bit behind x in terms of z scores, which means that it's regressing. It's behind. You know, if you regress, you are always falling behind. All right. So um, I know I'm kind of throwing a lot at you real quick here. Hopefully it's making a little bit of sense. Let's actually um, apply an example to this so we could try to have it make a little bit more sense. All right. So let's suppose that we have um, x versus y, okay? And let's say that we have our x's, we have our y's, and we actually know the data. We know that the average y value is 17.22, and the standard deviation for the x, I'm sorry, x, the average x is 17.22. The standard deviation for x is 19.70. And let's see here, the average y value is 161.11 and the average or standard deviation for y is 33.48 okay and the last thing we need to build our line is the r value and r is the correlation coefficient between these two values and it is 0.997 so very strong relationship between x and y here very strong linear relationship because it's correlation so the first thing we got to do to find our equation y hat equals a plus bx the first thing we got to do is find our slope b it is simply r times the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x so that's 0.997 times the standard deviation of y, 33.48, divided by the standard deviation for x, 19.70. So let me go and do that on my calculator. You want to pull it out and trust me, or go ahead and do it on your own. And we can just do 0.997 times 33.48, divided by 19.70, and I get 1.69.
okay? And then I got to find my A value. And to find the A value, you take the standard deviation of Y minus that slope you just found times the standard deviation of X. And let's see here, that's going to be 161.11 minus the 1.69 that I just found times the average X value of 17.22. So 161.11 minus 1.69 uh, times 17.22. That gives me a uh, y-intercept of 132.01. So my equation is y predicted to predict values. I would have a y-intercept of 132.01 plus my slope of 1.69 times x. So that is exactly how you would calculate your line of best fit. Where do you get the x average, the y average, the standard deviation for x, standard deviation from y? It all comes from your calculator once you type in your list. I didn't bother giving you the list, but pretend I had a list of a bunch of x's, a bunch of y's that match up, and that's what you would get for that, okay? So um, that is how you do those values. That's how you do that. Now, the key thing in class is we have to learn how to take this to context. We have to learn how to apply all this to the context of a problem. But we will do that. We will do that together, I promise. Let's just do a quick review of a least squares regression line. It goes through your data. What is it trying to do? It's trying to make all the residuals as small as possible. Obviously, some residuals are going to be positive. Some residuals are going to be negative. And you want the data to always go through the points, hence that your residuals are going to be as small as possible, and they would add up to zero. But we also want the sum of the square residuals to be um, as small as possible, hence why it's called a least squares regression line. Okay, then we have the actual formulas for our um, least squares regression line. There's the formula y hat equals a plus bx. That's the order we want. Sometimes people write it as ax plus b. No, 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 a plus bx. Slope is r times the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x. And the y-intercept a is the average y value minus b times the average x value. And the b is the slope that you just found. So you've got to find slope first. We talked about why it's called a regression line. That's because every time you move up one standard deviation of x, you move up r standard deviations of y, and r is always a little bit less than 1, or it's definitely less than 1, let's put it that way. And that's why all, at y is always falling behind or regressing. And we did an example where I gave you some averages and some standard deviations in the R value, and you went ahead and calculated it. The next thing that we really have to be able to do is apply all of this to an actual problem. An actual problem that makes sense, has some kind of um, value to it, okay? And we will do that in class, I promise. Um, a couple of the key things that we are going to be able to do that I want to get you set up for is we are want to be able to interpret the slope. So the 1.69 is always a fraction, so put it over 1. The bottom of slope is always x. The top of slope is always y. Go back to basic algebra. That is always true. So we say every time we move up 1x, we move up 1.69y. Okay, whatever the units are. Obviously, this problem is very vague, but in terms of units, okay, every time you move up 1x, you move up 1.69y. And that doesn't go against what I said earlier. What I said earlier is when you move up one standard deviation in x, you move up r standard deviations of y, which is always going to be a little bit behind. Trust me. We also like to be able to interpret the y-intercept. Remember, that y-intercept is what happens when x is 0. So when x is 0, I get a value of 132.01. So we want to be able to interpret that. You want to be able to say, hey, when x is 0, this is my y-value. Sometimes that y-value makes sense in context of the problem. Other times it does not. But you need to be able to think about it and to interpret it. So we're going to spend a lot of time in class talking about creating these lines, having them make sense in context of the problem. But the most important part is that you basically have a, a, a somewhat of a basic idea of how these lines are created and what they actually mean. We'll talk a lot more in class about it when we're done. All right, have fun, guys.